So, could you tell me, how did you come to poetry? Oh, I was afraid you were going to ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yeah, that's a good question. <clears throat> I remember, um, I mean, I've always been writing things down um, since I was a little kid. I, like, I remember copying passages out of Lord of the Flies. Um, <laughs> uh, but poetry as a genre, I, I found, I guess, um, in high school, I first fell in love with poets like March Piercy, Audre Lorde, Sylvia Plath. Um, and I guess I came to poetry as opposed to another genre because I never felt like I was a storyteller and I didn't feel like those women were necessarily telling stories per mm -hmm. se. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were after something else and, and I guess there was some crystallized meaning. There was something they were saying about the world and themselves that, that um, really spoke to me and, uh, and it, it was just sort of intuitive and authentic and, and I began my early, you know, my poems. Uh -huh. And you were, at this time you were growing up in the, in the San Fernando Valley? I was, yeah. I was growing up in the San Fernando Valley. Um, I left home for a while and was living in Northern California. I remember, I remember starting to write in earnest up there in, in uh -huh. um, Northern California. And um, how do you think the San Fernando Valley affected Kind of, I guess you would say your vision, mm. and then you can talk about Northern Northern California. Too. Yeah, well, I don't know if Northern California ha had much of an impact. Well, the, the the couple times I've been away from Los Angeles and the San Fernando Valley in Northern California, or when I went away to Bennington and Vermont, mm -hmm. um, all it did was kind of give me a contrast, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but that landscape um, is. It in, kind of informed everything that I did, especially in this book. You know, yes. um, when I'm trying to make sense of of these, I don't know what for me what it felt mythic the the topics that I was I was dealing with that I was that I was wrestling with, and so the terrain um, became this way to explore these big things that I couldn't quite um, face head on. Um, mm -hmm. The land, the the dry landscape, the the night, the you know um, the kind of toughness of Southern California, um, the beauty that comes out of that toughness, all of that I think mm -hmm. um, became a landscape and became um, part of the vision of the writing vision. You know, uh, I noticed in Night Radio that there were a lot of poems that. Um, have to do with m means of trans transportation. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of driving <laughs> poems. There's yeah. a lot of references to the 101. Absolutely. There's a train poem, a plane poem. Yeah. So there's this sense of a uh, moving consciousness. Yeah. One of my wonderful teachers, Amy Gersler, she talks about how the car in Los Angeles is kind of like our only space of meditation, you know, mm -hmm. and a reflection. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's definitely that. And it also is is the way you move through the landscape here, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, and certainly growing up here, I spent a lot of time in, in the car. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if everyone who grew up in Southern California can relate to that, but I think a lot of people can. It oh. seemed like there was a lot of reference to, uh, in Night Radio, to mm -hmm. different types of textures of communication. I mean, it's called night mm -hmm. radio and then it's got an epigram that seems yeah. to be drawn from film and yeah. closed caption TV yeah. and scripts and yeah so can you does that how do you see that fitting into in this project yeah um, location maybe or yeah I don't I, I, I wonder if there's if that's something about LA or if it's just something about the sort of uh, kind of layers of consciousness that are at work, you know, and uh, of, uh, and the way that, you know, the way that we see ourselves, both this internal experience that we have, you know, as people where it's very intimate and um, intuitive, 
and there's a voice that comes from there mm -hmm. um, that I that I think is in this book. And then there are all these other ways that um, we sort of make ourselves manifest, and that the and that the world kind of comes in. You know, these transactions, and mm -hmm. I and I think that that's part of where that came from. You know, these the, the there's the quiet voice that speaks closely. And then there's all this kind of static. There's these other layers of consciousness and, and um, um, communication and, and interaction. And, um, and I, you know, I mean, I think that the book is, is trying, it, really this book is sort of my attempt to m make sense of things and to, to believe in the world, uh, you know, since the book is about this this kidnapping and assault uh, of my sister, and um, and the and the effects that that had on, on me and my family, um, the book is really about trying to come to believe in the world again, and and you know what is what's real and what's not real, and what is beautiful, what what is beautiful out of all of this stuff that we are bombarded with that we encounter, you know. Um, so I think I, I think it, there, it probably registers in different ways. You know, there are different registers throughout the book, hopefully, um, because that's one of its projects. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a big story. I mean, it, yeah. all the poems are linked together, and and I do feel like that there is a sort of remaking of the world that's yeah. happening in the consciousness of the speaker yeah. and that is redemptive or I found it re a, re a redemptive read that way. Oh good, I'm but so glad. I wonder maybe maybe um, if you could read one of the poems. Yeah, I would um, love to. Which poem? How about starting with um, abduction because that okay. has to do with this notion of stories. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Abduction. There were stories before bed. My father with no book. My sister's black hair on the pillow. And two little girls just about your age. A story that unlocks the back door and jumps right out of the kidnapper's car. And he tells us that the girls ran past the lot behind the movie house, the drive through dairy, a small, vacant school with no tether balls. It's my turn to tell this story. Startling as a black bug, shiny as bolt cutters, brittle as a palm frond, just a fleck of blackness, and then none. This is just nostalgia. I know where the dishes go. I know how the story turns out. My sister doesn't jump out at the red light. How did father know? Besides, he was a cop. We ran track. It doesn't matter. You go for a drink or reach for the checkbook, and it moves around in there. Once, I found a beetle and a bite of whitefish. Once, there was a snake in the house that matched the color of the couch. I want you to imagine shiny black hair, something stuck in a tooth, a buckle, a shoe, a closet, a room. Imagine a close-up, underwater, weightless, slowed. I want to tell the story now. And the girls ran into the water, past the shape of buckets, the undertow, the color, the sound, a plane pulling a long, fluttering sign. Oh, it jumps out at me, the repetition of, it's my turn to tell this story. And, uh, yeah. I want to tell the story now. I want you to imagine. Yeah. So there's this whole authorial um, taking the reins of experience. Yes, and, absolutely. And, um, and, and claiming it, all these parts of the world involved. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that was huge for me. And um, I, I was inspired by, um, we were reading a book I took a class with the wonderful poet Leilani Hall. I don't know. Oh, if yes, I've seen her. Yeah. I haven't met her. And um, when I was at CSUN, and she had us reading a book about, uh, David Wojan um, wrote a book about um, 
making history and inserting ourselves into history. And for me, this was a very important um, turning point. That I wrote that poem right after that class and reading the essays that, that he wrote. And um, just this whole notion of the way that we make meaning. And, 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 and when a trauma like this happens, there are so many unanswered questions, right? And you don't know when the story is going to end, right? Whatever you're writing about, um, when is the end? We don't, I mean, everybody's still alive and changing, and everything's in flux. And um, so when you're trying to write about, for me, when I'm trying to actual write about actual lived events, and especially in a, something like this that actually happened, um, I, at some point I had to claim that I got to tell the story and that of course I wanted to honor the, all the participants and honor what happened but um, there was an empowerment in the, in the telling and in what, what I get to select what, what um, um, and of course I mean my project is that I want it to be authentic whatever that means um, I know that's a troublesome kind of word when it comes to art, but I, I wanted it to be authentic and I wasn't going to make it tidy at the same time, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So it all had to, there had to be room for everything. Mm -hmm. And how long were you writing before you came to the idea of doing this particular project? I, ha I have been writing for a long time and um, I, I'm, I don't think I really knew what I was doing. Um, I just knew, I, I believe that, um, I believe it's Toni Morrison that says something like, pay attention to what haunts you, you know, and I, and I didn't, I don't really believe that I have much choice in my subject matter, you know, I, especially as a poet, I sit down, I, 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 I attend to, you know, the particulars and the details, and um, if I'm really stuck, I'll just open the dictionary, and, you know, and then, I, and through these, these, these little things that I'm gathering, you know, my subject emerges, and um, uh, so I have been writing toward this for a long time, I, 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 10 years, I'd say, until everything kind of clicked in and I realized what I was doing. And, and at that point, you knew that you were going to do the, ent the entire arc, the lived-in arc, yeah, as much as you could. Yeah, and I mean, there's definitely poems here that explore other sort of facets, I'd say. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, at, at, at one point I knew this is what I'm doing and this is um, what this book is going to, this is what this book needs to be about. And, uh, and that felt like an exciting moment. Um, and then I actually had, was able to kind of generate some poems out of that, out of that knowing of, mm -hmm. um, okay, so I want to um, kind of cover these things that haven't yet been t talked about in the book. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, and all those linkages you were working on. Mm -hmm. um, so... One of the things I really love about your work is the way that you reconstitute the world with fragments mm -hmm. and uh, disparate kind of objects. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, and uh, for me, uh -huh. it's um, redemptive. It has that kind of a redemptive feeling. And I picked out one poem, Sleight of Hand, oh, yeah. which I, page five, yeah, which I, I feel I exemplifies that, that. Okay. Sleight of hand. I've fallen for the silt and turkey vultures, the Thai food and sleeper waves, Molotov cocktails and polystyrene, soap flakes and the CIA. The cop yesterday at a press conference holding up each moment, tear gas and battering ram, and four black and whites in front of 7-Eleven. I want his hands that won't shake. Even though it's just a choreographed illusion, like a sword passing through a beautiful woman in a basket, the trick is her black feathered straps, her legs roped and spread eagle. I'm confessing my love for performance. I'm collecting mother of pearl and pictures of the sky each curtsy and canary, a lover's hand I'm holding to a thigh. How can I not submit to this world? I lift my torn oyster veil every time. I take in the body dumps and bookmakers, the calling cards and ephedrine highs. I kneel down 
I make this vagrant world mine. Yeah, it's really, I love the poem. Mm. Thank you, Marcia. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I think about you know the redeeming the world, but I, and then I think about um, being lovers of language. You, you know what I mean? That 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 there's that aspect for those of us who write poetry and um, who, where poetry speaks to us. Mm -hmm. I mean, all those words to me, um, they're like jewels. You know, they're they're or they're like you know driving down the highway at night and the smells that kind of come in the car and um, mm -hmm. so there is there is definitely. <laughs> You have to be a lover of language, I think, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm responding on to, to, I'm confessing my love for performance. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I just wanted to stop on that word confessing yeah. uh -huh. and confession yeah. and confessional yeah. and uh, ask if you see yourself in that mode, in the mode of confessional poetry and with variations, mm -hmm. you might yourself be making yeah. on the traditions in within that genre yeah I um, I um, I have revisited the confessionalist poets recently in the last couple years and you know the I guess the critique I get especially now is just that the, it, it's that confessionalism is sort of this reporting of lived experience, right? And so, and to me, that just doesn't hold up when you actually look at the work of Berryman or Plath, um, um, two of my favorites. Um, but I guess I would see myself as, I, as a postmodern confessionalist. And what do you mean by postmodern um, So I, I think that I am working with lived experience. I don't think that like, like the confessionalists I think who were trying to break taboos, although this, my, the subject matter of my work can be, um, I, I wouldn't call it taboo, I can, I, it can be difficult, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that I feel like I'm breaking taboos, I'm not like those guys were, you know, writing about their suicide and mental health, uh, you know, their, their suicide attempts and mental, mental illness and things like that, but I'm definitely, um, writing about lived, actual lived experience and at times and um, and there's an intimacy to the work I think uh, a, a truthfulness but when I talk about postmodern confessionalism I think it's some of the stuff that you are noticing about the work that there is um, there's not one um, unified voice in the poems necessarily that I bring in other registers um, w another um, kind of hallmark, I would say, of what I would call postmodern confessionalism is um, the endings are the, the the endings of the poem. They kind of end on a minor note, or they end un unfinished. Um, uh, mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, there was one other thing that I that I wanted to add about that. Um, that is escaping me at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess it's just what you were saying, the fragmentation, um, that, the, that the story is not, uh, although, as you noticed, I, there's an empowerment in the, in, in the authority of telling stories, the stories are not told in um, this way of, this is what happened, you know, and here's some sort of um, kind of whole complete rendering of that. The, yeah. the, the fragmentation, the sort of circular narrative style yeah. of the work um, is, is speaking to the difficulty of confessing or telling stories. Like what is true and how do we kind of render an intimate experience in, as a work of art? Um, yeah. so, so to me that would be the difference. Um, you know. Yeah, it's definitely a non-linear narrative yeah. that, that you've got going. And to the extent that you call that narrative. I mean, right. it is one large overarching yeah. story. And it's also interesting, I think, that the book, um, that the figure of the sister yes. remains a cipher. Yeah, absolutely. She is um, rendered at other times in her life, yeah. but not the consequences for the speakers, uh, a lot of deep, you know, in, uh, sympathy and connection with the father yeah. 
some with the mother, yes. but the sister herself, we don't know as much about her. Right. And is that a deliberate choice to not tread into her yeah, experience? Yeah, I think it is. And I think, I think as I started to realize um, what I was doing, that I was writing about this event, that I was writing about my family, um, I tried to keep the the eye, the, the or the vision, is what I mean, um, uh, on kind of there's a sort of panoramic on the family, right? Uh -huh. I feel like uh -huh. I, the camera kind of pulls back and looks at it, but it's really ultimately my story uh, yes. uh, or the speaker, you know, the whatever me and all the things that go into making up this speaker. Um, it's that's the story. So sh so I, I yeah, and I and I also think that I. I um, out of respect and privacy, I want to wanted to kind of keep it focused on that, mm -hmm. um, rather than the you know what happened, what does it look like? Mm -hmm. and, yeah. So this book has won awards. Why don't, why don't we just talk briefly? It was. Why don't you tell us who published it and uh, okay. that it award? Was, it was published by the University of Utah Press. It won their Aga Shahid Ali Prize in Poetry. Mm -hmm. um, yes, congratulations! Which was quite an honor. Yeah. Um, and, and then recently, it was a finalist for the 2014 Kate Tufts Discovery Award. Yeah. So that wow. was also quite um, an honor. Um, yeah. As you know, it's difficult <laughs> to be a writer, to be a poet, to send this work out again and again, work that um, means so much to you, that you spend so much time with. So it's wonderful when it is received and, mm -hmm. and recognized in some way. And have you been? Um, Reading around the country, around Southern California. Yeah, I've mostly been reading around Southern California. Mm -hmm. I, I'd say last year I did um, the majority of my readings, so, uh, some of which I was with you. You know, I got to see you and Phil. Um, yeah, and mostly st have stayed local, um, mm -hmm. but it's been good. And I had a, I've had an interesting experience reading from the book. Um, what is that? Well, uh, and I had said this in some, in some other context, what, writing the poems wasn't particularly an emotional experience, but reading from them has been. Uh, you oh, know, really? having them in this book and um, wanting to really stay present and possessed in the readings mm -hmm. um, has been, at times, an emotional experience. So, so that, have you found yourself welling up with tears? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and really? feeling very vulnerable. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, but that's good. I mean, I think that I don't want to hide. Um, as our beloved Joan Raymond once told me, never hide in your work, in your art. Um, so let's talk just briefly about um, Joan Raymond. I, I know you have a Ventura County connection. Mm -hmm. And I know I, I ran into you when you were in Ventura County, but I was never part of the Joan Raymond workshop. And so I'm just interested how it all happened, how long you, you were in Ventura, under what context? Well, I was, I was in, you know, in the San Fernando Valley, and then my husband and I actually moved to Ojai for a couple oh. of years. So we were in Ojai, um, but I had known Joan um, before that. I would submitted to River Talk, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, she called me and said and invited me to come have lunch with her at her house in Ohio. Oh, nice. And then became a mentor to me and published. When my, was this? How I guess ago? this was um, 1999. Oh, a long, quite yeah. a long time ago. And I also met Lee McCarthy there, mm -hmm. um, who also we wrote letters back and forth. And those two women were um, very significant to me, um, and and their bravery and their um, talent and mm -hmm. what they did for poetry and for women um, had a big impact on me. Um, so I felt pulled in to the Ven to Ventura County community and then I was able to live in Ojai for a couple of years and really be connected. And, mm -hmm. um, it was and then what happened? Did you move? And we went back to San Fernando Valley and now we're in Los Angeles. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, at least you're a member of the Artist Union. Oh, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so now that you've done this project, Night mm -hmm. Radio, what's happening with your work now? What are, you, what are you working on now? And are you, do you have that feeling of like, I told this story and now 
I'm moving on, I'm done with it, yeah. or has more opened up within you. I told this story and there's more to be told. Well, I've, I mean, I, I, was, I look at the book and I feel like there could be more, I could have said more, you know. Mm -hmm. I, um, yeah, but I have moved on, um, and it was difficult. I the book, um, you know, was a, was won the prize and um, was published r shortly after I um, gave birth to my daughter. Mm -hmm. So uh, I ha naturally had a little break <laughs> <laughs> in writing there. So. Uh, <laughs> But, but getting back to writing, thankfully, I had moved on to other subject matter. Now I became really focused on become, being a mother uh, mm -hmm. and um, the sort of um, kind of shambles that your identity fall, you know, your identity sort of falls to shambles and pieces <laughs> as a mom. So yeah, and, and those first poems, the, 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 new, the new project, the first poems were challenging and I was, I was really wanting to try new things. I was wanting to do less kind of image-laden work and work more with syntax and sentencing and, um, mm -hmm. and uh, I was sort of wanting to try new things. And, um, and, and so the, these last couple years I've been at work on, on, on a new manuscript. Um, and it began with the poems about mothering and mm -hmm. all that that brought up in me. Um, and even this idea of, of, my, of being mothered myself or mothering parts of myself. And, and, it, and, and so what started to happen was um, this idea of badness, of you know, being bad, of little kids misbehaving and, and wanting to carry that conceit out as far as I could. So now I'm kind of writing you know, about mothering and and, and when I say bad, what I mean is the wildness that a child has that becomes domesticated over time, that is lost that by necessity, right? We don't like put our toes in our applesauce and like, you know, <laughs> poop in the backyard and stuff, right? <laughs> so, I mean, we have to become domesticated, I guess. But there's something so precious that is lost. And I, mm -hmm. I've been watching that. And I've been thinking about what that means for myself. And, um, and so, so when I say badness, that's, that's more what I mean. And uh -huh. so, so now I'm looking at badness in all these contexts. Like I wrote a poem about Thelma and Louise. I wrote a poem called Tramp Stamp about, um, you know, when I was getting tattoos and um, getting sober and all, all this stuff. And um, uh, poems about, uh, I read that poem, The Crossing, about Tony Soprano, and, and uh -huh. um, so, so I'm kind of, you know, starting with, think, you know, starting with the thing that was right in front of me again, once again, you know, and then kind of carrying it into all these other ways, and that's been really fun. Oh, great. It yeah. sounds exciting. Yeah, so hopefully it'll, it's, it's so, so at this point it's titled How to Be Bad. How to Be Bad. <laughs> <laughs> And we'll see what happens. Is it is it a completed manuscript? No, no, not yet. It's about I'd say it's halfway there. Uh -huh. Maybe. Gotta be bad. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's let's do another poem. Okay. Um, another one I I found. It seemed like it was working towards um, um, towards redemption, mm -hmm. towards a full acceptance of the world as it is. Yeah. And uh, expressing that. Uh, yeah. And maybe not quite celebrating it, but expressing it fully. Yeah. And that one was uh, Latchkey. Ah, okay. Sorry, 59. Yeah. Latchkey. Catholics, liars, cops, a pocket of pills, a hard plastic doll. I might have been a fat child. I might have taken scissors to my own red hair. Not fine, but loaded on Dr. Pepper and too much free time. No one told me what I love doesn't have to be ugly. I've borrowed this tuxedo, this top hat. I make jazz hands. I've learned tap. On the closed circuit TV in my mind, I kneel down. The surveillance footage is in black and white timed and without sound. I've grown sick of listening for coyotes and house cats through all the commuter traffic, 
through the blaring ACs. I'm out and I want to come in free. Mm. I, I love the couplet, no one told me what I love doesn't have to be ugly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes there's this exasperation, with, uh, right, having, having, being in this, like, it's kind of being in this position of having to see it all, right? Uh -huh. Being one of those people that is willing to look. Well, I... I also like the line you finished with, I'm out and I want to come in free. So, um, you're out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it, another interesting thing about the poem to me is that here are these poems that are expressing sort of mastery or control uh, of this disparate world, and yet they always also have this element of submission. Yeah, yeah. I kneel down. Yeah. I kneel down. Yeah. I nailed down. I accept what is. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that that's a big part of it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, um, I mean, I think that's part of what we do when we make art, is that we make some, you know, we're makers. Uh, we take all this stuff, you know, this the stuff of our imagination, the stuff that we experience, and we accept it. And we, you know, rather than, I don't know, I guess, entertaining ourselves in some other way, um, we take it in and make something out of it. Mm -hmm. um, Do you have a line somewhere in here about that being necessary? Is it? I don't know. Maybe I do. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some version of that. Yeah, yeah. I was wondering yeah. how, you, how you feel that way about poetry. I mean, in a way, poetry is one of the most obscure it is. art forms, and yet... It is. It requires so much work. I know. <laughs> I know I'm, I'm, I'm starting to write essays, actually. <laughs> no, really, I have. I've actually been working on these lyric essays and these, this creative nonfiction. Uh -huh. And it's interesting to me because I, I have this, I, I, I took a class this summer with this great uh, organization called Writers Workshop Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. um, and. Um, and so anyways, I, it's interesting to me because in these other genres, they, you know, your audience expects so much from you. <laughs> they want you to spell everything out for them, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm realizing, oh, I'm realizing two things. Poetry for the reader is some work. Um, there's a willingness to uh, engage or immerse yourself in the material and allow yourself to make the connections, right? Or to kind of um, be taken by the connections that are made and, and mm -hmm. be okay with that and let that resonate with you. Um, so there, there, there is more, the ask, uh, from, you, you do ask more from your reader. Um, mm -hmm. And yet I also think there's a certain person, there's some way that we poets perceive the world mm -hmm. It just feels right, and you know, I kind of know it. I have a, you know, I'll have a student who I can just tell, like, sorry, you're a poet. <laughs> <laughs> Art news, because <laughs> yeah. it is that you work very, very hard, um, and you have, you know, a limited audience. But as my as my students say, because I always ask them this question of, you know, audience and does poetry matter and can poetry change anything? Because I want to know what they think. Uh -huh. um, and they say, well, hey, if one person, you know, if, that's always their answer. If one person is connecting, if it creates empathy, um, uh, then, it's, then it's powerful because it is, it is not unlike an article that you might read on some, you know, um, news magazine on the, on, the, on the computer, right? You read it, whatever, it, gets, it comes, it goes. It's, uh, but the connection that is made through poetry is a very deep connection. I believe that there is a reason why I can't spell this out in, in a clear expository kind of statement. Because the things that poetry um, is getting at are, are, are things that evade expression. I mean, mm -hmm. they are the mm -hmm. great truths of, of, of our lives, of our world. Um, you know, dare I say it, right, I, th th that we're trying to, to kind of wrestle with. So, um, yeah, I think it, it is very much a devotional art form. Um, yeah. 
I think that's a good note to end it on. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank it was you, wonderful Marcia. talking to you. It was it was really wonderful to be here. Thank you. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> hey Phil, we're done.